dive into the fascinating world of computers and programming. At their core, computers are complex machines that process and store information. They're everywhere in our lives, from our phones to our cars to our kitchen appliances. But what makes them tick? That's where programming comes in. Programming is the process of creating instructions that tell a computer what to do. It's like a recipe, providing step-by-step -step directions to whip up a tasty dish. There are countless programming languages out there, each with its own strengths, weaknesses, and best uses. Some are suited for web development, others for data analysis, and yet others for creating video games. But no matter the language, all programs need a way to interact with the computer's hardware. This is where the operating system comes in. It facilitates the communication between the program and the computer, allowing the magic to happen. With the basics under our belt, it's time to understand how code becomes an executable program. Every program starts with code. But how does it become something a computer can execute? Imagine code as a recipe. It's written in a way that programmers can understand, but our computer needs a little help to make sense of it. That's where compilers and interpreters come into play. They're like chefs who take the recipe and turn it into a delicious meal, or in this case, an executable file. Writing and structuring code is akin to laying out the ingredients for our meal. Each programming language has its own syntax or way of organizing these ingredients. Once we have our code structured properly, the compiler or interpreter steps in. It reads the code line by line and translates it into machine language, a language our computer understands. Different programming languages use different compilation processes. Some, like C and C++, use a compiler, which translates the entire code at once. Others, like Python, use an interpreter, which translates the code as it's run. Now that we have an executable, let's delve into the world of binary code. Binary code, the language of computers. It's a system of representing text or computer processor instructions using the binary number system's two binary digits, 0 and 1. These binary digits, or bits, are the smallest unit of data in computing, and they're what makes your computer tick. Now, you might be wondering how do we go from the high-level code we write to this binary code? The answer is through a process of translation. High-level code like Python or JavaScript is translated into machine code, a low-level language that your computer's central processing unit can understand. This is done by a compiler, a sort of translator for code, but there's a step in between known as assembly language. Assembly language is a more human-readable version of machine code, and it acts as a stepping stone in the process of turning high-level code into machine code. With our machine code ready, it's time to understand how the operating system comes into play. The operating system, a program's best friend, but why is that? Well, the operating system, or OS for short, is like a conductor for the symphony of processes that occur within a computer. It manages program execution, ensuring that each program gets its fair share of the computer's resources. Think of the OS as a traffic cop, directing the flow of processes and threads. These are essentially smaller parts of a program that can run concurrently, boosting efficiency and speed. But that's not all. It also oversees memory management, a crucial part of running programs smoothly. This involves allocating space in the computer's memory for each program and making sure they don't overlap. The OS is the unsung hero in the background, coordinating all these tasks seamlessly. Without it, our programs would be like musicians without a conductor, each playing their own tune without harmony. Knowing how the operating system helps, let's see how our program gets loaded into memory. From disk to memory, a program's journey. Let's delve into this fascinating voyage. A program begins its life on a hard drive or other storage device. When it's time to execute, the operating system steps in and loads the program into memory. This is where the magic really happens. Memory is divided into two key sections, the stack and the heap. The stack is a neat orderly place where variables are stored and retrieved in a last-in, first-out order. On the other hand, the heap is a bit more wild and free, where memory can be allocated and deallocated as needed. Managing these two realms is a delicate balancing act performed by the operating system. It must ensure that each program gets the memory it needs without infringing on the space of others. This dance of allocation and management is crucial for smooth and efficient operation. With our program in memory, it's time to meet the heart of execution, the CPU. The CPU, where the magic happens, the central processing unit or CPU, serves as the heart of any computer. It's a little like the conductor of an orchestra directing the performance of the entire system. Its architecture, a marvel of modern engineering, is a complex maze of circuits and transistors designed to execute instructions with lightning speed. 
these instructions derived from the binary code we discussed earlier are processed in an intricate dance of fetch, decode, and execute. And while all this is going on, the CPU is also brilliantly managing multitasking, juggling multiple processes and threads to ensure everything runs smoothly. In essence, the CPU is the ultimate multitasker, handling everything from simple calculations to complex graphical rendering, all while managing the communication between other hardware components. It's the driving force behind every program you run, every game you play, and every file you open. With our program running, let's understand how it interacts with the world outside. Interacting with the world, the role of input-output operations. This is where the magic of human-computer interaction happens. Programs interact with hardware through a dance of inputs and outputs. When you type on your keyboard or move your mouse, you're providing input. When the screen changes or a sound plays, that's output. But how does this interaction occur? Enter system calls. These are requests made by running programs to the operating system for performing tasks like reading from a file or sending data over the network. They're like a program's way of asking the computer, hey, can you do this for me? Managing these inputs and outputs is a delicate task. The program has to handle the incoming data, process it, and then determine the appropriate output. It's a cycle of constant communication between the program and the hardware, a dynamic dance that keeps our digital world spinning. Now let's delve into what happens when things don't go as planned. When things go wrong, we debug and optimize. This statement is a mantra for all developers out there. In the world of programming, it's not always smooth sailing. We often encounter issues during program execution. These issues could range from syntax errors, logical errors, to runtime errors. To fix these issues, we use a process called debugging. Debugging involves identifying, isolating, and fixing the problems within our code. There are various tools and techniques for debugging, such as using breakpoints, stepping through the code, and examining the state of variables. But it's not just about making our program work. We also want it to work efficiently. That's where optimization comes in. Optimization is the process of modifying our program to make it more efficient or use fewer resources. This could involve reducing the time complexity of our algorithms or minimizing the space used by our data structures. With our program optimized, let's look at some advanced topics in program execution. Beyond the basics, the advanced world of program execution. Now, let's dive into the exciting realms of parallel and distributed computing. Here, multiple processors or computers are employed to solve a single problem, enhancing speed and performance. Then, we have just-in-time compilation and interpretation. It's like having the best of both worlds. The code is compiled on the fly during program execution, which allows for some serious optimization. Last but not least, let's talk about virtualization. This is a game changer. It's like having multiple computers within your computer, each running its own programs independently. This not only maximizes the utilization of your hardware, but also provides an added layer of security and isolation. These advanced topics can dramatically affect the way your program is executed, opening new doors to efficiency and innovation. Having covered the journey of program execution, Let's conclude with some real-world applications. From code to execution, a recap of our journey. We've delved into the fascinating world of programming, unraveling the process by which a computer runs a program. We began with a basic introduction to computers and programming, followed by a detailed exploration of the compilation process, binary code, and the role of the operating system. We journeyed into memory, understanding how programs are loaded, and the crucial role played by the CPU. We then examined input-output operations and the art of debugging and optimization. Advanced topics like parallel computing and virtualization were also touched upon before diving into real-world applications and case studies. As we look ahead, emerging trends and technologies continue to redefine the programming landscape. Expect to see advancements in areas like quantum computing, artificial intelligence, and cloud-based solutions. These innovations are set to revolutionize the way we think about and interact with computers. Thank you for joining us on this journey of understanding how a computer executes a program. Stay curious, keep learning, 